you know, we're happy with the off season. Um, you know, we're not traditionally a free agent destination, um, but based on what we had to offer, which, which was a defined negotiation at the mid level, um, we accomplished one of our goals. We wanted to get, we wanted to be more athletic. We wanted to be better defensively this year. We wanted more versatility on the perimeter. Uh, we wanted to be able to switch more and we wanted to be more disruptive as a defense and be more aggressive on that end. So, you know, in free agency, getting a guy like Derek, uh, who's an elite athlete, you can protect the rim. He's a great finisher, you know, rates in the 80th percentile and blocks and steals was a big win for us. And, um, you know, free agent wise also, you know, obviously getting Carmelo back was probably the most important thing, honestly, you know, what he does for our spirit and our culture and the way he was able to perform and compliment our guys on the court um, and make an impact right away, have a guy that's willing to take and make big shots down the stretch was huge. And um, we think we got a really nice player with Harry Giles, who, you know, is somewhere between a young developmental guy and a guy that's been in the league long enough where you can put him in a meaningful game. Can you walk us through sort of the, the what led you to Covington and pursuing that deal and how quickly that uh, transaction was ironed out with him and, and why you uh, went after him so quickly? Well, again, um, you know, our offseason focus, we believe the biggest upside for this roster is on the defensive end of the court. Um, you know, we were a top three offense. We had the best offense in the league in the bubble, but we ranked 27th in defensive efficiency. So clearly that was a need. Um, part of that is going to have to be addressed strategically in terms of how we're planning to play. But the majority of that needed to be solved from a personnel standpoint, which is my responsibility. So you know, obviously, Robert's one of the elite defenders in the league. He's a former first-team all-league all, all league defender. Um, he makes threes. He's a perfect complement to Damon she CJ. He's a low-usage guy, doesn't need the ball as much offensively. He plays traditionally off the pass. Um, and what we identified, knowing the contract we had to convey, you know, we set a reserve price at, you know, Trevor's contract plus, you know, two protected draft picks, basically, was what we were willing to convey. We identified a few players around the league. Robert was at the top of the list, and we found a willing partner with Houston. I think we look at, um, at, at DJ and Cov kind of a little bit, not dissimilar to the old Farouk Mo model, right? They can switch. They can both play either position. Um, you know, both guys are elite defenders. They've got length. Um, you know, like I said, Cov is more of a, catch and shoot guy. And I think, you know, Derek is going to be more, you know, pass cut, move without the ball slash, um, you know, generate a lot of his offensive production through his energy and athleticism. But I think those guys are interchangeable. I think, you know, if we start either of them, there's an argument that one could be called power forward. The other could be called small forward. It really doesn't change kind of how we play on either end of the floor, which I think gives us a lot of flexibility. And I think the fact that either of them can move to either position. So, Either one can slide to four with Hoodie at three or Gary at three, and either one can move to back to three with Carmelo at four or, you know, one of the bigs at four. So that I think position list is more how I describe them than position specific. Could you circle back to Rodney and, and do you expect him ready for, uh, for opening night? And then in larger picture, how do your, how does this off season position you in the West? Do you think how close, uh, do these moves get you to where you want to be? Well, with Rodney, yeah, he's he's certainly tracking towards being available opening night. He'll basically be one year post-surgery. Uh, by the time, you know, opening night comes around, he's done a great job with his rehab. Um, you know, I mean, look, that's for the pundits, Joe. I, I Look, I think, I think we're a better team than we were last year. I think we're deeper. I think our biggest challenge was on the defensive end of the floor and, um, you know, finishing out possessions and closing them out with rebounds. So obviously we added two elite defenders with uh, Robert Covington and Derek Jones. Um, we're certainly getting better rebounding. You know, um, Robert Covington's an excellent rebounder, so is Derek. And then we've all seen what Ennis Cantor can do on the offensive glass. So like I said, I think our two biggest challenges were, you know, getting stops and then closing out those possessions with defensive rebounds. And, you know, I think we've added players that fill those needs. So, um, you know, we're, we're always going to be bullish on our team, but, at the end of the day, look, we're, we were high on the roster last year, and I think it's a combination of both. We, we have the guys we thought were really going to contribute to a deep run in the playoffs from last year's team, and we've added and complemented them with what we did in free agency and trades. Starting the season, Aaron, we've only got two guys over 6'8 that are healthy right now with, you know, with Nurk and with um, Ennis, and that's why we signed Harry. You know, he gives us a different look. 
Um, he gives us that athletic mobile center um, that can play against some some of the more undersized guys that we have trouble with at times. You know, we've got you know, we've got Mello and you know Cub. You know, at four, I think Derek can slide there as well. So a lot of it is we want the versatility. Um, the league is going more positionless. What we wanted really was guys that can play multiple positions that have defensive versatility, that are more athletic, that are longer. They can shrink the court. They're more switchable. They can be more disruptive defensively. We're hoping to get out and transition a little bit more, get some more easy baskets. So, um, you know, I mean, look, I think the vulnerability is you've got to go into the season basing things on worst case scenario. We think we've got incredible depth and we've had help in our backcourts, but we've been vulnerable to injury last year. You know, we ended up Powell never played. Zach got hurt right out of the gate. Um, you know, Nurk, Nurk, Nurk was back on a longer timeline than anticipated. And, you know, suddenly we woke up and Hassan Whiteside was the only guy that could play the five position. So, you know, we want depth and we want versatility and we think we have both. 